Hello, welcome back to Real World Climbing. My name is Josh and welcome back to the series on building a home wall for the Real World Climbing Headquarters Part 4 that I've been going through. This is episode 2.5, which I'm going to be inserting into the playlist. Earlier I did the episode 2 on the design and the fine-tuned plans. And I had mentioned that occasionally I use Google SketchUp to model it in 3D and be able to get a picture of 3D space. And so based on request, that's what this video is going to be about. <music> This looks familiar. This is the plans for Real World Climbing Headquarters Part 4 and I go through a lot of detail on how I do that in graph paper in this video up here. But today we're going to jump into SketchUp. So we're going to take this and jump into the computer. Alright so here I am. I just went to app.sketchup.com and it brings me to a login page which I've already logged in under my Google account and then you come in here and you if you've used SketchUp before, you'll see your open projects here. You can continue to work on them, or you can go ahead and start a new one, either by hitting the Start Modeling button here, or you can hit Create New. When you do hit Create New, you're going to have choices on how you want to set this up. And so if you prefer to use feet and inches, you can do that. If you prefer to use the metric system, you can do that as well. So this will come into play a little bit later. So you do want to kind of choose how you want to be entering this. So since my brain is kind of in the United States working with feet and inches, I'm going to go ahead and keep it at feet and inches. You will want to choose wisely which of these choices you choose because it will affect how you type things into the keyboard to make uh, very precise measurements here. So I'm going to stay with feet and inches, but you would choose what you would prefer to work in. I'm not going to go into every single tool in SketchUp, so there are plenty of YouTube tutorials on how to use SketchUp. So I'm just going to kind of go into this on the quick and dirty, the way that I use this to model out climbing walls. So I won't use every single tool on the left hand side. I also want to reiterate that I'm doing this based on not having the exact measurements, plotting out every single 2x4 to actual dimensions and things like that. And so you can do that and if you really love using SketchUp and you really like being specific you can absolutely design it this way. I'm going to design this in a conceptual way so that way I can just see what it looks like and feel what this it's going to be like in the space. So the first tool that we're going to go into here is down here and it's the orbital tool. So with the orbital tool when you use that you can just click your mouse and you stay in one spot, but you can view it from different perspectives. So if you ever want to switch back to the pointer tool, you just hit the space bar, or you can obviously come up here. So use the arrow tool to highlight things, to select things, and you can do click and drag selections as well. And then if you want to move something around, like if I wanted to move this guy out of the way, then you're going to use this directional tool, which is also the M on the keyboard for move. And so then I can move him in three dimensional space. Switch back to the arrow, click off of him. Also, the keyboard shortcut for this orbit tool is O, and we can do that. Now, if you hold down the shift button while you're on the orbit tool, then you get this hand, and that will allow you to move the whole scene. So I know these are kind of SketchUp basics, but I think it will definitely help you interact with the tool here. And then also, the scroll wheel on your mouse will zoom you in and out. So the first tool we want to use is this rectangle tool, which is an R, if you want to use it for a keyboard shortcut. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find a spot here, and I'm going to build out the floor. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to just single click it. And as you see there, I let go, and it just created this small little rectangle. But I don't like the size of that rectangle, so I'm going to hit Control z like any other program, to undo. I'm just going to single click it and then so I didn't click and drag and I just leave it here okay so what's really cool about this and I want to draw your attention to it I'll bring my pencil down here is these coordinates down here these dimensions down here in the bottom right so you can see as I drag this it's showing me the dimensions okay so if I want to build this with exact dimensions then I can just type in the keyboard which dimensions I want, which I don't know off the top of my head, so I'm going to refer to my documents. 
All right, so I brought down the top view of the garage. And so it looks like it is 19 wide by about 25 deep for this garage. And so that's what I'm gonna build out. All right, so then I'll click in here and draw out a rectangle. And then I'll use my keyboard to go 25. I'm gonna use the little apostrophe for feet and then a comma separator and then 19 and then the foot sign there in a little apostrophe and hit enter. And it literally builds me out my rectangle. So if I orbit here, I can now see this in the top down view. Okay, so that is the floor dimensions of the garage. Now, what I want to do is I want to use the push pull tool, which is this one right here. And I believe the shortcut is P. So when I have the push pull tool, I can move my mouse over the rectangle and it gives me these little blue dots. So then I click on that and then it's just a single click, not a click and drag, and I can push or pull this and give it depth. Okay, so I want this to be the height of the ceiling, which is 10 feet. So then again, I'm just leaving it fluid here and I'm just gonna write 10 feet and that's giving me my height. So now I have this box, okay? It is a closed in box. If I wanted to, I could zoom inside of that and see the inside of the box, but I wanna make this nice and easy on myself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this front wall off. So I just use the arrow key, front wall, hit the backspace, and I'll take the ceiling off. And I'll even take this little line out as well. So if I highlight something and hit the backspace, it'll delete it out, go back to my orbit tool, and now I have my interior of my garage. So now, if you look at my drawing, I've got this area for storage that is not really usable I've got these file cabinets over here that are not really usable. And I have this closet here that's not really usable space. So if I wanna give myself perspective inside of this garage, I'm gonna go ahead and build those things out. So this closet here is seven feet wide and three feet deep. So I'm gonna go ahead and build that out as well. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna come back to my rectangle tool and I'm gonna come in this corner of the room and I'm draw out my, my rectangle and I'm gonna go seven feet and three feet. So I'll just do seven apostrophe, comma, three apostrophe. That's my seven feet, three feet. And again, if you're using metric, then you would go with your measurements. Hit enter, and it gives me a box there. I'm gonna go back to my push pull tool, pull that box all the way up. And there is snapping, so see how it snaps to the edge of the other tool. Coming back to my drawing here, I've got this storage stuff over here, and then I've also got the file cabinets over here. Now I could build them out to be you know, exact because it technically kind of ends here, but there's a freezer here and other things up here. So this whole zone here is essentially unusable. So I'm just gonna go here that it's three and a half feet wide and I'm going to build that out there. And then this is two and a half feet wide and I'm just gonna basically block that off. So I'm not trying to make it look exactly like my garage, but I'm gonna block off those areas. So two and a half on the right, three and a half on the left. So with that, I'll come back to my rectangle tool, draw out a rectangle, and in this case, I'm gonna go 25 feet, so it's gonna go all the way to the end of the garage, comma, 3.5 feet. Now I could do it with inches and everything like that, but the system does know what the decimal means. So now if I come back here, I got that, go to my push tool, and this storage stuff, I'm not gonna build it all, all the way, but let's just say it's four feet high. Okay, come back to my rectangle tool and I'm gonna do the same thing here. So it's 22 feet remaining and I want, so I'm gonna go 22 feet comma 2.5 feet. And then push tool, bring that up four feet. So I have one more piece of the puzzle that I have to bring into this garage. And that is side view of the drawing has the indication for this jut out on the ceiling portion that I've got to bring in. So that is comes into the garage six feet and it's a foot and a half deep, so 18 inches deep. So I've got to account for that. Once again, we'll use our rectangle tool. I'm gonna to come out six feet and one and a half feet here. So I go six feet, comma, 
1.5 feet. And then, you guessed it, get the push tool, bring that all the way out here. Now it looks like my garage. All right, so now you're probably wondering, how do I get angles and how do I build out the actual climbing wall? And I'm excited to be able to tell you that that's what we're jumping into next. So how I do that is I take what I affectionately call the head print. And I mentioned that in our part two video. The head print is how much space it takes up at the ceiling. And so with that, what I do is I'm able to look at this and say my 15 degree wall, this is all based on my calculations. I did the math and so I'm not doing the math in SketchUp. So I've determined that in order to get a 15 degree angle for the 10 feet to my ceiling, it's gonna be two and a half feet out when you get to the top. So that's the head print, it takes up two and a half feet, okay? And then the same thing for the 25 degree wall is it's gonna come out four and a half feet. So I also wanna make sure I start this in the right place of the garage. And so it is five and a half feet from this back wall where this is gonna start. So it's another piece that I'm gonna keep in mind. So for this, we're gonna use a little bit different tool. And for that, I'm gonna use this tape measure tool, which is T on the keyboard. Okay, so from there, I'm gonna just go to this point here and I'm gonna come over. And again, I want it to be exact. So I want it to be 5.5 feet and hit enter. And it's gonna leave this little mark here. And the nice thing about putting these little markers is the system will then snap to it. And then I want another one eight feet away from that. So I'm gonna do another marker here and do eight feet because my climbing wall is eight feet wide. So now I've got the base, the two marks here is the base of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build a rectangle again, okay? My rectangle is gonna start there, go to there and come up, but I want it to come up past that on this face here. So you see how like, if I come up too far right now, it's gonna go on this back face and it's kind of crazy. So I'm gonna leave it on this face here where it's green and I'm gonna, do this at eight feet wide by 10 feet tall. So that's gonna go all the way up to the ceiling just in a rectangle. Hit enter and it builds me this wall. Now what I wanna do is I wanna pull this wall out at the two and a half feet. But if I do that right now with this line here, it's going to be very bad. So I'm gonna go back to my selection tool and delete that line out. And now this whole thing here is a rectangle. Okay. Use my push tool, highlight that face, click it, and I'm going to come out 2.5 feet. Okay. So not sure exactly why it decides to put lines everywhere, but I do need to take these lines out. So I'm going to highlight that. And then just in case I put one over here, which it did. So this just takes some maneuvering in 3D space here. and remove that. So now I've got this box here, okay? And that box is basically the equivalent of my 15 degree wall. So let's go ahead and make this actually look like a 15 degree wall. So for that, I want my pencil tool. So it's this one here on the left, or I believe it's L on the keyboard, yes. So this is just drawing a line instead of drawing a rectangle. So what I do then is I'll just start down at this end point here, and I'll come up to here, click that. And then I'm gonna come back to my selection tool and I'm literally just gonna click on these corner lines and remove them. It's kind of removing my floor, but that might be okay. And then one more. And I'm gonna come back to my orbital tool here and I'm just gonna draw the line on this other side as well. And redraw this line here. So if I redraw those lines from point to point, and it's really nice that SketchUp just snaps to it. So now I have built out my 15 degree wall at the proper angle. Now I'm starting to get kind of confused a little bit by all this blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and use another tool that I like to use called the paint bucket, which I believe is B, yep, bucket B on the keyboard, we'll switch to the paint bucket. And if I want to, I can select a color and just paint this red. And you can kind of see, well, why is that darker? Well, that's just perspective. This is 3D space, okay? 
I mean, I don't want it to be red. So I can just do plain old colors. I can also do textures. So I believe there is a plywood colored texture here. So yeah, this one looks kind of like plywood. So then I'll use my paint bucket and I'll paint my side. So now it's starting to look like a climbing wall. So now I want to do the same thing except for over on this other side for the 25 degree wall. And for that, I want to make sure that I'm starting in the right place again. So I'm going to use the ruler tool, the tape measure tool. And if it was five and a half feet from the back wall, but I have a three feet closet here, so then I need two and a half more feet here. So I'll come down here, 2.5 feet. Another measuring point here, eight feet. And that's my starting point there. I'll get my rectangle tool. Start to draw that on the green axis, and I'm going to go eight feet by 10 feet again. That's going to go all the way up into the ceiling there. Okay, which is okay. So I'm going to just have to remove some things. So I'll go to my selection tool here, remove that, remove this ceiling piece here, remove this line here. I'll pull it back, I'll put it all back so it'll all make sense again. So I use my push tool here and I'm going to put, pull this out four and a half feet, 4.5 feet. And then I'm just going to repeat the process that we just did. So I'm going to remove that. Now there is a difference here on this wall compared to the other wall. What I have to contend with here is I have this kickboard here. So to get 25 degrees, I'm not actually coming down into the floor. And so with that, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to measure up that one foot. So it's a two by 12, which isn't quite a foot, but then I also have the two by fours here. I'm actually going to come up 13 inches up here as my starting point. Get my tape measure again, and I'll come up 13 inches. So I'm actually just going to come up here and I come up 13 inches using the quotation marks and I get my little mark there. It might be hard to see, but it's that darker dot right there and see how my mouse keeps snapping to it. Okay, so that, now that I use my line tool, is going to be my starting point up to that corner and that is going to be my angle. So I'll just repeat this on the other side. Can be a little bit harder because of the positioning here, but I can do it. Like that. Get better up 15 inches. And then the length from there up to the corner. And all I do is I just remove these faces here. It looks like I destroyed stuff, but I didn't. My lines still exist. So now all I have to do is redraw a line here and redraw a line here. And voila. I now have a 25 degree wall that I can paint. So I know this is just a quick and dirty drawing here, but it's definitely actually working. So as promised, I'm gonna build back in that jut out and I just literally draw a line through there. Now to be more accurate, actually, the sides of my wall are gonna be exposed. So I'm gonna actually have storage back there. So And I can actually remove all this if I really want it to look like what it's going to look like. Because what does it look like? It's a freestanding A-frame. So again, I'm not drawing out all the two by fours that would be framing this in, which I could if I wanted to be that detailed, but I just want to see what this is going to look like. And so the last piece of that is the roof portion. And so that's as easy as connecting these lines here. So, this is my freestanding A-frame as it would look in 3D space. Now you can do a lot of other cool things with SketchUp, like you can have lighting and see how the light would shine off of things. So one other thing I do wanna show here is as you're working your way through here, you can use this walk tool and you can basically have it not move around with the orbit tool, but move around as if you're walking. So you just click and then up will move you forward, back, turn, etc. So that's the quick and dirty on how to take SketchUp and to build out a 3D model. You can go into more detail, you can work on the depth of things. It's just gonna take a lot more fine tuning and things like that, but those are the basic tools and the basic use of this. What I like about this is you can position this 
in a, a viewpoint. And then you can just use your snipping tool and you can create for yourself some images that you can then use. So let's go ahead and close this thing out. So thanks a ton for joining me in this series. I'm so glad to have you here. Click up here if you want to continue on with episode three. And don't forget, if you're getting a lot of value out of this, to click the chains on the subscribe button. I'll see you guys real soon.